I did really, really want to support other women and I just wanted to give back to those women. And I wanted, I want this company to be about how we support each other, what, what, how we invest in each other and how we look after each other. I think that's really, really important, especially as women, especially as black women, we've got to look after each other. And for me, that's what this company represents. Mm. Thank you, Sandra. And that's a beautiful story. I love how it started. I mean, I didn't know that. Um, and yeah, that's really great that you was able to help, you know, women feel more beautiful going through such a harsh time that they do as well. So I love that. Um, I'm going to bring the question back to I one, not the same one, but I was just reflecting on when you when you spoke to your uncle about, isn't it interesting that I'm doing clothing and so did my grandma and he said it's mental illness I love that <laughs> um but I mean my question to you <laughs> I loved it it was so authentic <laughs> but I was thinking so what actually what was your mechanism in starting this documentary why did you feel like it was such an important story to tell and how does it now has it changed how you run your business now like what has the influence been and the next steps from that documentary that you did yeah I mean definitely um well like I said at the beginning it was initially supposed to be a short five minute video just to talk about the history of the fabrics that people were buying from me in my clothes that I made and then it kind of just blossomed into this epic extravaganza that is wax print film right and um it's funny because in the two years since the film came out, my relationship with wax print has changed, right? So I actually no longer wear wax print um, anymore. Um, it's not something that I feel like I can or should wear. Um, and so in my clothing line, um, that's been on a back burner because of the film and a few other um, issues. But if when I do start the clothing line again, it won't be with wax print fabrics because okay. I, I'm not at peace with wax print purely because of the generational wealth thing that I just spoke about. Every time you buy a piece of Blisco fabric at 65 pounds for a six yard veil, the majority of that profit is going to the generational wealth of Dutch children. Yeah. Um, and I want the majority of the profits of most of the things I buy, particularly crucial things like textiles to go towards the generational wealth of African children in Africa. So that's where I'm at now. Maybe it will change. I don't know, but that's where I'm at. Yeah. Thank you. I, I understand that, actually. Um, and Sandro, how do you feel after doing that documentary? Has it influenced any business decisions? with your well, company because I've been on the right track ever since <laughs> okay, I know what I'm doing um <laughs> I started I think I had the, the you know I think I was on the right track and I think by supporting these women I'm buying directly from them okay directly from them so I am already supporting women in those places so I feel really confident in doing that and I feel um and, you know, they'll message me and say, because you bought this barrel of material, I've been able to do this with my children or been able mm. to do my kids as they have started this school or whatever, you know, these kind of lovely little messages. That's yeah. why I do it. OK, so I feel like I'm on the right track mm -hmm. um, and I want to continue that and I want to build that. And I would love to be able to work with lots more women and to be able to support lots of women along the way and to still be able to support women who are going through a difficult time through alopecia or um, losing their hair to chemotherapy. I, I still want to be, I just want to be, I just want to do all of it. Yeah. Which is of, as much of the <laughs> I can provide, I, I want to be able to, to do all of that. Mm. But, right. but I, think, I think another thing like, and, and I hear everything that um, um, Sandra's saying and I agree fully 100%, but I think another thing that, I, that really troubles me about wax prints is the fact that on the continent of Africa, we have had a history of textile design and production for millennia. And there are so many fabrics in Africa that are just stunning, absolutely stunning. And I want them to get the light of day because even though you support generational wealth through buying the fabrics from these African women in, in Africa, the thing is in terms of like a branding or a marketing thing, 
it's still the promotion of a type of cloth that has come from the West. And as we know, in this very, very visual age that we live in, um, it's what people see. Do you see what I mean? And so I want a culture where we're promoting the textiles that are indigenous mm. to Africa. I want to see more kente. I want to see more adire. I want to see more ashoke. I want to see um, more just all of the, you know, the 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 um, bogolan from 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 Mali. I want to see more of that because that for me is is the true marker of of who we are and what we do as Africans. But that's just my little two pence. I'm working on it. I want give me, you know, give me some. <laughs> I'm working on it. No, but that, but, that, but honestly, Sandra, that's not a, a dig at you in any way, shape, or form, because I love Knots UK. Um, I shout it from the rafters. I tell everyone about it. I'm always forwarding them on to you. Do you know what I mean? I just want to see us embrace um, what's ours, you know, fr from the roots upwards, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the beauty of these discussions. Even documentaries like yours is everyone's going to have different yeah. opinions, but I feel like everyone has the same ambition or goal in trying to you know do right by our own people which i hope is everyone's mission these days um so moving on i got a really good question from miss b which was this documentary is so detailed well researched and so important to our legacies you talked about the diaspora supporting africans what was your journey like in getting support to fund this film oh i pretty much didn't get any support <laughs> so, wow. um, so basically that's the reason why it took so long to make so what I did was I would go to a country I'd save up loads of money go to a country blow it all shooting in that country come back completely broke like with five pounds a week save up loads more money um, and then go back to another country um, and so that's how I made the film and then in the very very last like when I was literally doing post-production, it's the editing and stuff. Then I got some Arts Council funding to help with the finalizing of the film and the touring of the film. Um, but essentially I funded it myself. And, I, and the thing I would say to people out there who are making films and aren't sure how to proceed, don't always wait for funding. Um, because what I found is that since making that film and doing that sacrifice, now there's a lot of people who come to me and want to fund the work that I do. And that's because I, did that sacrifice to make wax print. So if you've got an idea, particularly you black filmmakers out there, you know, invest in yourself, believe in yourself, and then other people will believe in you. You know what I mean? Thanks, Iron. Some inspiring words there for everyone. Um, so I'm gonna go back to Sandra. <laughs> um, so what's next, Sandra, for Knots UK? What's next for you? Um, I guess probably um, to have kind of a stock at stock list somewhere. Um, uh, we were recently in uh, the Stylist magazine and we've got some things coming out again in the Stylist magazine soon as well. We were in um, Black Beauty, Black Hair and Beauty magazine recently as well. And um, one of our head wraps, not currently, but it was um, in Only Foods and Horses on stage. Mm -hmm. um, one of the uh, the actresses wears uh, two of our head wraps on stage every night when wow. theatre was around, which is fantastic. Um, and it's, just, <laughs> it's, it's a bit it's so it's it's been a great journey, um, and I'm enjoying it. And I'm also enjoying all the women that I meet along the way. So I'm learning from so many people, and I, I take from everybody what everyone's giving me, and I kind of soak it up like a sponge because I'm. I'm learning so, so much about, about, about business, about um, being, how we can be more creative. Um, and and I, to be honest, everyone's always asked me, um, how does it make you feel when you wear your head wrap? And I always feel like a million dollars. Like I do, I'm sorry, but I do. And if you don't like it, that's you. Like, you know, I, I, always, I always feel really confident and really, really bold when I wear a head wrap. And I want that for other women when they wear a knot head wrap. I want them to feel bold and confident. I want them to stand out, get noticed. Why should we hide? Why should we be invisible? I want you to stand tall, right? Yeah. 
Stand tall, everyone. You heard it from Sandra herself. <laughs> um, thank you so much for your words, Sandra. We're going to move into your demo, but yeah, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to ask I one one last question. Sorry, because I feel like everyone would want to hear the answer to this. Um, how do you feel about non-Blacks wearing wax print? I was hoping you weren't going to ask that question. So I've got to wait. <laughs> got free. Got to be contentious, me. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I saw. I think it's as as Aaliyah, um asked that question. Yeah. Um. So when I was in Afropunk, there was a massive hoorah at the end of the festival because there were some white girls who were wearing wax print, and there were some black girls who weren't keen on it because of the way they were in the space. And then um, some black guys kind of jumped in and defending the white girls and then the black girls got very very annoyed and pissed off because they felt like the black men were taking the side of the white girls and this whole sort of beef kind of took up um i feel like wax print doesn't belong to us as africans it's a hybrid textile it was created by white people it has its roots in indonesia and through the ingeniousness of banana benzes it became you know, popular in Africa and sold really well. And obviously the design changed as well to match African aesthetics. So for me personally, I feel like anyone can wear it. All I care about is supporting indigenous African textiles because that is truly ours. So let's invest in ourselves, invest in our textiles and reclaim and promote what is ours because we have so many beautiful things on the continent and we need to start valuing it. Thanks, Iwan. Yes, buy black, be about black and invest in your indigenous communities. Thank you so much. And I think this is a great moment to move into Sandra with her demo. Thank you, everyone. And please, um, if you can, Iwan and anyone else, try and answer some of the really good questions that are coming through as well on we'll the chat. Thank you. Okay. Everybody have their material ready to give this a go. Is everybody ready? So I've got some material here. I'm gonna move you back just a little bit. And I'm just gonna show you, can everybody still hear okay? Just a couple of styles, okay? Just to show you how easy it is. I'm gonna put a knot at the front. Tuck the material in. And then I'm gonna put another knot at the back. And then I'm gonna tuck that in. So head wraps are all about knots and tucks, okay? Just think about it. You, Put some knots in and then you tuck the rest of the material into the, the head wrap, okay? So there's nothing hanging out. There's no material hanging out. And that's an updo, okay? So very similar to the, the way that I'm wearing my wrap, except um, I haven't covered all of my hair. So I've just done a kind of half updo where this is a full updo. So you've co I've covered the whole head completely, okay? So I'm going to take this down. If there are any questions in the chat, can someone just let me know if people have any questions? Now, this is one you see a lot everywhere, which is just uh, kind of twirling the material together and then creating a little knot at the front. So this is like like everyone's kind of go-to is to have a little knot at the front, okay? So that's two. And then if she wants to leave her hair out, I can do the same. Again with your hands, just uh, rolling the material together like that, twisting it together. And then creating a knot. Again, tucking the material. It's not gonna go anywhere. This is, it's not even tight, okay? 
So there is space in between the material and her head. So there's still space, but the material is not going to move. It's not going to come off. Okay. And these are cotton. So they, they kind of stay secure. So that's three. And then this is one of my favorites, which is to twist it round and then just tuck it in at the sides. So it creates this kind of really pretty kind of side thing like that. Okay. And then everything you've done at the front, you could do at the back as well. So again, material, but not at the back. And just to show you, again, I'll do the twist. And this is just to create a side knot. And then you get a lovely side knot on the side, okay? And then I can cover the whole head. Oops. And lots of people will do this as well which is just a tie. So the ponytail is like an anchor, okay? So you can use your ponytail like an anchor. But remember, you can do these styles without any hair at all. So even if you have very, very short hair, you can still create these styles. And the way to do that, so the way that I create kind of um, these types of hairstyles for women who've lost their hair is to put like a, a piece of material inside, or an old t-shirt, um, any, any kind of material you have laying around you just stick it in and then you tie around it okay so you you do you, you manipulate the head wrap in the same way you would if you had hair but just around the t-shirt the or the material and so this is a full head cover now each each one of these styles that i've just shown you has literally taken me about 30 seconds so just to show you how easy and how quick it is to wear a head wrap, it's so simple and you look fly. Like there's no reason why you're not uh, wearing a head wrap, okay? Like it's, it is really, really simple. We've got lots of videos on our website, on our Instagram page, Knots UK, lots of, um, you know, descriptions on how to, how to wear them. With every purchase, you also get a how to knots postcard, which gives you an example of how to wear um, one style, one head wrap style. So there's no excuse. You don't have no excuse, okay? I hope that's really helpful. Are there any questions? Uh, I've got a question. What is the name of the one that the model is wearing? What, this one right yeah. here? Yeah. So these are, these are called updos. So they, when you, when, you wear, when you have to pull your hair up, they're called updos. So using, using your ponytail as an anchor. So even if you've got a tiny little ponytail, you could still do it. And like I said, if, even if, if you don't have um, very long hair or, or short hair or bald hair, I want those, she, she knows how to wear a head wrap too. Um, you can still wear a head wrap in the same style. Cool, <laughs> and how long does the fabric have to be? I was having troubles with mine, by the way, it was too short. <laughs> Well, that's why you have to check out our website. We, we, we give you the perfect size head wrap, okay? We have practiced so much about how long we think they should be. So we've got head wraps that are rectangular. So we think that if it's rectangular, you've got a lot more material to play with. Um, so there are lots of different sizes, but if you check our website, we've got exact measurements on our website. I think they're kind of 72 centimeters long. Um, I can't remember what they're by, but you'd have to check the website to have a look. Um, and you can also do this with bandana style head wraps as well. So the kind of uh, square ones, but obviously you wouldn't be able to cover your whole head with that. That's just for kind of looking really cute and covering just the front of your hair. 
um, as you would wear one, any type of uh, bandana. Cool. And do you know the name of that um, that print that's on the models? This okay. one, it's it's called Nuswa. Nuswa. Okay. Yeah. Um, and there was another question, but you did answer it when you was doing it. But it was, how do I create the height that you do with these stars? And you were saying to tuck the the t shirt in. Yes. Yeah. Any material you have at home, you can use. Okay. You have a tiny little piece of material. You ball it up and stick it in in at the top, as you like, like as if it was a ponytail. And then you just you hold on to it and you work around it. It is really really easy to do. Um, our, uh, the face of knots is, is completely bald. She has no hair at all, but she, she wears lots of head wraps and she wears lots of different styles. Um, and she's brilliant because she really gets to, when you see her wear a head wrap, it, it, I thought it was just great to have her as a model to be the face of the brand because when women who lost their hair to chemotherapy, they could see a real, a true example of someone who's wearing a head wrap who'd lost their hair. Okay, cool. And a couple more one I don't like my ears covered but when I do updos without putting it over my ears it falls off what can I do so Anjali's ears are not covered at the moment and it's still pretty tight I think you have to you can you can always use pins if you you know kind of just bobby pins to stick it in at the back of the ear if you're worried about it moving but I think you've got to have a, a secure kind of you, you have to have a secure anchor so like like the material is the anchor, the head, the the ponytail is the anchor. I think that helps it to stay um, in place. Cool. And are there any rap styles that are representative, like for certain events, so weddings, birthdays? Oh, well, well, yeah. Well, there's the <laughs> um, the jelly, and I do not mm. wear them. Um, so our head wraps are much more of a kind of um, modern style of wearing a head wrap. Um, so I, I, I guess we started wearing head wraps. So as you can tell, I'm American as well. So um, in America, we kind of started taking back the African print material, I think um, back in the seventies and eighties, um, the dashiki became a real uh, statement um, for black Americans at that time, um, black power. And so um, that became part of who we were. And so as a black American, a black Caribbean American, I think that for me, that's how I am connected to it as well. So it was a way of kind of taking back a bit of power um, as a black American, a black Caribbean. So mm -hmm. taking back that power. And I'm sure um, you probably know this already, but um, when slaves were taken from Africa, they were stripped of their African material. Um, they, they were stripped of all of their cloth and were forced in, in America and in the Caribbean to, to cover their hair. Um, and, uh, and in fact, in the US, it became a law, Tinian law, where um, slaves had to wear their hair covered. But you know what? We wore our heads covered but we look damn good in it too okay so it backfired um because you know we will fly and uh, it, i think it stressed a lot of people out but that's how we do things and so um it's a it's a way of kind of taking it back and owning it and um yeah anyway <laughs> thank you um and the last question before i make a close um where did you get your jacket from? Everyone's, everyone loves it. <laughs> well, the jacket is really, really special, actually. Um, so the jacket was made by for me by a woman, a white British woman who lived in Africa for many, many years. And talk about appre appreciation of African print. Um, and she is a real advocate of this, of, of the fabric. And basically you go and you sit with her for two hours and you tell her your story. So the jacket represents my story. So every little bit on it has a meaning. Okay. It's part of the story that I told her about my life. So my son's on oh. here, Anjali's on here, my family's on here, I've got the Haitian flag on here, voodoo's on here, you know, um, there's lots of things that represent me. So the jacket is my story. I love it. 
thank you so much. And again, thank you to I1 as well. The documentary, as you could see by all the comments, was just amazing. It was fantastic. I know we all learned a lot and it was a pleasure to have you um, at one of our Camden Black History Season events. Um, so for those of you that don't know, we're running our season from October to December. We're now in November, but we still have a lot more events happening. So please look at our Love Camden website um, for more um, if you want to come along. But it's been great to see the conversations happening, super engaged. I've been loving the conversations, the questions. You've all been amazing. Um, and we will be posting the video of this discussion, not the video itself, but remember the video link is out for till midnight. Yeah. So you can have a look if you didn't get to see it. Um, but yeah, this will be posted on YouTube at some point and you'll get notification of that. Um, and it would be good to share that and maybe have a look back if you missed anything. Mm -hmm. But lastly, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone and goodbye and have a look at some of the websites that were posted in the chat as well. So for Knots UK, it's knots-uk.com slash head wraps or slash accessories. And then we've got I1's website, which is www.waxprintfilm.com. Very simple, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if you have any other questions I'm sure you can look on the websites and contact the company owners themselves but yeah I'll say goodbye to everyone and I hope you have a lovely evening